the Google OnHub router. On their product page, some of the first text you run into is that the OnHub gives you fast Wi-Fi. Good, uh, good to know. It also states that the OnHub speaks human, that its helpful feedback and simple setup will be easy to use. We will check these things out and we'll test its performance to see if it's worth a damn. So stay tuned to find out and hit that like button below if you want to see me investigate the diminishing returns of adding more fans to your rig. MassDrop is launching three new communities for RC cars, photography, and Corvette enthusiasts. Check them out in the links in the description and subscribe so you don't miss any updates. This router is a collaboration between Google and TP-Link, but why, you might ask? That's a very valid question. It seems like the combined attack is designed to conquer the frustration of people who don't want to or don't know how to go through the advanced process of setting up your network. And the OnHub also seems to be designed specifically for a Wi-Fi signal crowded apartment, which can kind of be a war zone for certain routers and can cause a huge amount of signal reception issues. In terms of specs, this two pound, 7.5 inches tall, 4.6 inch diameter flower pot-esque router is packed Packing a dual core 1.4 gigahertz processor, 4 gigs of eMMC flash, 1 gig of DDR3L memory, 1 USB 3.0 port, a 3 watt speaker, ambient light sensor, 6 tricolor LED arrays, Bluetooth 4.0, 802.15.4 conformance, gigabit WAN broadcasted by 6 2.4 gigahertz antennas and 6 5.0 gigahertz antennas, and finally a single lonely gigabit LAN port with one more thing, let's not forget the last single 2.4 gigahertz antenna, which we'll talk about later. So yeah, I hear ya. A standard 1900 megabit per second AC Wi-Fi router with one gigabit LAN out connection for 200 bucks? It needs to prove itself, and we'll get to that in a moment. But first, there are a few oddities in that spec list that we should explore. Now that single 2.4 gigahertz antenna that's kind of off by itself is actually just a dedicated antenna for finding the most appropriate channel to broadcast on, which is actually pretty cool. It will search every about five minutes, I believe, and it won't switch channels unless you're not really using the internet. So that can be kind of handy so that it can be the most efficient for you when you get home. But the Bluetooth radio, the USB 3.0 port, and all that compliance gear is all kind of off at the moment of filming and the certain speakers like the three watt speaker are kind of not properly utilized in my opinion. Then there's the ambient light sensor, like what do you do? Anyways, this will all be working for Google On in the form of a Brillo enabled device using the common language protocol called Weave. But as far as I know, there isn't anything out that can communicate with the Google On Hub in this way. Yet you're paying for all of that compatibility now. The value of this part of the OnHub is currently just a giant question mark. So this is the OnHub. In the box, you'll get a kind of power brick thing that's plugged into the wall already. Two Ethernet cables that'll come wrapped up like this. They're flat, which is pretty nice, but they're not all that long. Neither is the wall power plug thing. Um, it's kind of interesting because in a lot of their product stuff, they show it on shelves, uh, like bookshelves and whatnot, and that might be fairly difficult for some people to get power and ethernet to, so uh, I don't know about that. But if you can make it work, then it, can, it does actually look pretty good. We have the blue one, there's a black one as well. On the bottom of the OnHub, you'll see kind of a half circle symbol right below where it says OnHub. That will line up with another half circle at the bottom. To take the outer shell off, all you have to do is turn it so that it lines up with the dot and then you can lift it off. I already have it plugged into ethernet and power and you can see at the top there's a blue ring. There's a piece of paper somewhere that I don't remember where it is right now, but it basically says a solid blue ring means that you're good to go. A teal ring means that it's ready to be set up and an amber ring means that there's a problem and no light means, well, it's not receiving power, which is fairly self-explanatory. I've already downloaded the app, so let's get going. So in the app now, it is actually very simple, but there's a few cool things, like this is how it uses the three watt speaker. First off, it finds the on hub, but then it communicates a secret code through audio. It's kind of interesting, you'll see in a sec. All right, so now we got the code, it's gonna connect to the on hub. Just setting up the wireless name. Please don't use a password that bad for anything ever. 
And that's it. Now we're in the app. It's pretty straightforward. In Wi-Fi access, you can reveal your password and even actually share your password using this button through social media or email or whatever. I don't really recommend using this password and I don't really recommend using that because having a full copy of your password on the cloud somewhere is probably not the most secure way to do things. Now I am going to have to change this a little bit because as it is complaining I have another router on this network and I'm not bringing that one down so I'm going to turn this into bridge mode and then we're going to test it against the Ruckus R710. This is not going to be a very fair test. This router is like over $1,200 and this one is $200 but we can see kind of how good it is in general and have a kind of best possible scenario comparison against it. Okay, so now we're actually testing the Ruckus and the OnHub. What I'm gonna use for testing them is the Wi-Fi adapter that runs off of the X99 Deluxe board that we have. The reason for that is this is actually the only thing that can receive three by three MIMO Wi-Fi connections that we have. So I have to haul this thing around. It's gonna be super annoying. Don't worry about it. I've already tested the OnHub and the OnHub is currently unplugged. We're gonna be testing in a whole bunch of different scenarios. We're gonna be testing in here, just kind of across the table. We're gonna be testing through the wall in the benchmarking room, through the wall and a bunch of random metal stuff and a few other things in the library. And then also upstairs in Linus's office. Then I'm gonna do a range test while just like watching a Twitch stream and walking and waiting until it disconnects. So this is the first test. Like I said, I already have the OnHub numbers. And we're gonna do a file transfer test, not a speed test.net because it's more representative. We have an SSD array server, so file transfer speeds should be fine. So first thing I'm gonna do is gonna try transferring the test file from the server to our computer. Just past one minute and 20 seconds, almost done. Done. One minute, 24 seconds. Now I'm gonna upload from the computer to the server. One minute, 51 seconds. One minute, 28 seconds, point one. 122.4, two minutes and seven seconds, point eight. So we are connected to Turnip Wi-Fi. As you can see, Turnip Wi-Fi is our on-hub router. Now I'm just gonna jump over here. We are watching a Twitch TV show. This is Face It TV. And we're just gonna kind of walk out of the office and see how far we can go until it disconnects. It's still totally working. I'm gonna go towards this construction site. Oh, it's buffering, but I'm not entirely sure if that's the router's problem. Yes, I have lost my router signal. It's got some pretty hardcore stuff to contend with, but I'm wondering, the Ruckus might win this one. All right, so now we're gonna do the range walking test, just like we did with the OnHub, but with the Ruckus R710. Going out the door. Still working. Still connected to Wi-Fi. Oh, nope, I'm off Wi-Fi now, so I've lost Wi-Fi. So our very unscientific range test has shown that the Ruckus R710 made it to here and the OnHub made it three, four, five, six, seven random Luke sidesteps further, whatever that means. And we're back and that was not expected. I when pitching a $200 router against a $1,200 AP in an AP style test, you'd expect the $1,200 AP to just completely run away with everything, and that's not actually what happened. The OnHub won in most scenarios, granted, not by a lot, but it did, and in some scenarios it was a fairly significant amount. That being said, there was the one random test in the editing den where the ruckus just totally ran away with it the one time, but that's not that significant in the grand scheme of things. It didn't represent all the other tests that we ran. And then even when we did the walking test outside, it's still lost and by a pretty significant amount. That being said, it was still running quite fast and Ruckus's strength is focused around a massive amount of users, which I can't really represent here all that well. I'm not a school, I can't have like 30 different students with phones and laptops all running at the same time. I actually don't have enough devices for that. That being said, I could get a pretty heavy load, but it, the OnHub has a really strong CPU for a router in it, for like a random $200 router. So it might be able to kind of keep up with that as well. It was interesting. I'm very impressed with the OnHub, but it comes down to a few different things. You lose a lot 
of your customizability. You can't change a huge amount of options on the Unhub. You can almost change nothing. You can set it into bridge mode, you can change your password. Uh, there's not much more than that, to be completely honest. Whereas the Ruckus, you have total control over a huge amount of stuff, especially if you get the Control Hub thing. Um, and there's always the kind of freaky part about what data exactly is Google taking off of this. There's what they tell us they're taking off of it, but tinfoil hat on, they could definitely be taking more. Anyways, for the value, it actually seems really strong. It's an extremely, extremely competent router for $200 with mystery features coming in the future. Do you guys think it's worth it? Let me know in the comments down below. Squarespace is simple, powerful, and beautiful, and only $8 a month. But if you sign up for a year at a time, you get a free domain for that year. Pretty awesome. They have responsive design, which makes it so that your website scales and looks great on any device, including phone, tablet, laptop, full computer, whatever you want. They have commerce platforms if you want to have a store, and even have little module features like cover pages, which is a feature that allows you to set up a beautiful one-page online presence in minutes for things like a cover page or a resume. They have 24-7 support via live chat and or email, so start a trial today with no credit card needed and start building your website immediately. When you decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure you use our offer code Linus to get 10% off your first purchase. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Also check out their link in the video description down below. Thanks for watching this, guys. If this video sucked, you know what to do, but if it was awesome, get subscribed, hit the like button, or even consider supporting us directly by using our affiliate code to shop at Amazon, buying a cool t-shirt like this one, or with a direct monthly contribution. Now that you're done doing all that stuff, you're probably wondering what to watch next, so click the little button in the top left, right, top right hand corner, to check out this video where I do something random. I didn't pick one, so click it anyways. It's a mystery. <laughs>